Hey everyone, welcome to this updated video guide for my 80s retro poster Photoshop action. So if you're familiar with this, you already know what this one does, but if not, it turns your images into cool 80s synthwave or retrowave style artworks. You just need to open your main image, mark the subject area and run the action and you get something like this. You can use it for your posters, flyers, vinyl covers, CD covers, t-shirts and whatnot. So this video will be about this version 1.2 update and I'll show you what this version update contains. With this update, this action will work with any language of Photoshop. Previously it was limited to the English version only. Now it does not require any initial layer naming, like you do not need to rename the initial layers like background, subject, it will be done automatically. And then the RGB color mode is selected. And something good is I have included some additional retro graphic elements like these ones and text effects you have been asking me about this so i have included them over here as well all right let's uh, open one of our image and i'll show you how you can use this so i've opened this image and let's load up our action files for that i'll just go to file and open then i'll go over to my main download folder and it should have this install files inside folder alongside you will have the additional retro elements PhD files and a health file I'll go inside this folder and then I'll select all the three files you will see there is an action file with the version 1.2 and the pattern file and the brush file I'll select all of them and click open and it should load everything into Photoshop if you want to check you can go to brush and you will see that the retro poster brushes have been loaded the pattern should also be there and let's bring up the actions panel i'll simply go to window actions and here is the action also says version 1.2 make sure you are having this 1.2 to just be sure that you're running the updated version of the action so before running the action we need to make sure a few of the things are set up in our photoshop correctly so that the action works and gives you the best results first is the mode should be rgb and 8 bits per channel then Click this flyout menu just beside this layers panel and go to panel options and then make sure add copy to copy to layers and groups is also checked and then click your brush tool and make sure the mode is set to normal opacity flow are set to 100% you have to make sure that opacity and flow are set to 100% for the action to work correctly and I'd also suggest you go to image and image size and make sure you have image somewhere around the size of 3000 pixels the shorter side should be around 3000 pixels it works good with images having size around 2500 to 5000 pixels but the best result you would get if you have an image with the size of around 3000 pixels so with that done you need to mark your main subject area where this effect should apply for that you have to create a new layer you do not have to rename it to anything and such and you just need to select the main subject here we need to select this guy with the skateboard so here i can use photoshop's subject selection tool make sure the main layer is selected and we'll go to select subject and it has done a pretty good job looks good to me so i'll select that layer and i will fill it with any color And I'll deselect the selection by selecting the rectangular marquee tool, right click and deselect. So here we have a small area that got left out. So I'll just take the brush tool and fill it with the color. Make sure you are on this new layer. So you should have the subject selection on a new layer and your main image should be on another layer. So with that, we are good to go. Just open your actions panel, select that main action and hit play. So the very beginning you get a prompt like this that asks you to adjust the shadow and highlight. So it's clearly written over here that if you feel the image shadow and highlight is well balanced then you can simply skip this step by pressing continue here and then pressing ok on the next step. But if your image is too dark you can decrease the shadows by increasing the slider value on the next prompt. So let's click continue and here is the next prompt shadows and highlights. So if you think it looks fine then you can simply skip this step by pressing ok but if you think your image is too dark you can increase the brightness in the shadow areas by increasing the slider you can actually run the action and then if you do not like the results if you think the colors were not generated correctly because the shadows and highlights were off you can run it again experiment and have the best results so i'll keep it to zero for my case and hit ok and the action will run and continue through the other steps i'll fast forward from here and get back when it's done 
So the action is finished processing and here we are with the final result. Let's collapse the action panel. And the first thing we can do is you can change your text here. You can simply take your type tool and click on this text and say something that you want to create for your poster. But if you do not like this style, you can drop one of the texts that's provided in the additional graphic elements. So I'll hide this text effect, but I'll select the group and I'll open the additional graphic elements files. And from here, let's take this text style. I'll simply select the move tool. I'll grab this layer and drag and drop it onto my PSD. So I can position it just like this. I think I should increase the font size a bit and I can also change it to something like this. Let's also grab another text. Uh, let's grab this 1983. I'm selecting the move tool and grabbing the layer, dragging and dropping it on my canvas. Let's align it. You can also transform this. I'll hit Ctrl T or Command T if you're on Mac and then I'll again hit Ctrl to free transform and skew this one and match it up with the previous one. I'll press this check mark to commit the changes. Let's double click on the type and change the font to something interesting. This should look good and I'll place it just over here. And one more thing I think I should change before I go over all these layers that are generated. That is this graphic elements. These are these skylines that are there at the back. This is not that much visible because of our main subject. So I'll grab the group press Ctrl T or Command T and bring up my free transform tool. I'll simply increase the size like this so that it becomes a bit more visible. Maybe I think I can increase the text's size a bit as well. And we can put one of those triangles again from this additional graphic elements. I'll select this shape one, drag and drop it onto my main canvas. I'll hit Ctrl T or Command T to bring up the free transform tool rotate it a bit and place it just like this. We can also take it down behind this graphic elements. All right, so let's see all the elements and go over one by one. So first is the background elements. Here you have some adjustment layers like this vignette, some stars. You have the glow control, the base, star base. You can control the glow by changing the opacity. And then you have the background hatching and then you have the background color. You can double click on this color and you can change it if you want, just like this. You can also change the color of this background hatching. Let me zoom in a bit so that you can see clearly. So you see these faint hatching lines. You have this color overlay. You can double click on it to bring up the color overlay. You can click here to change the color. You can see the color is being changed. So I'll keep it to what it was. Then we have the sun elements. If your sun is too big, you can select the whole group, press Ctrl T or Command T and then resize it and then move it or place it at a position that you feel best. You can change the sun's gradient color. So if you open this sun folder, you will see that you have got two types of sun. One is sun striped and the other one is sun complete. So this one is without the stripes. So you can change the gradient colors in one of them. You, you have these gradient layers. You can double click to bring up the gradient fill window and then click on the gradient to bring up the colors. You can select one of these color nodes and then change the colors just like this. Make sure to change the glow color as well to match it with the base color. For now, I'll undo it and keep the orange pink gradient. Next, we have the palm trees center. So once you open it, you will see there are two palm tree style. One is palm complete sun center. So this one is for a complete sun style. You can pair that palm tree with the complete sun folder. And the other one is palm striped. So that one is definitely for the sun striped folder. So I can hide this image uh, so that you can have a better understanding, better look of the graphic elements. Next, this is the shape element that I dropped from the additional graphic elements. You can also expand these FX icons and you can change the layer styles if you want to. You can change it to something more customized if you like. Then we have some graphic elements over here. The first one is the stripes. 
you can change the gradient color of the stripes this one is essentially the blue stripes that you see under the skyline you can click on this gradient overlay and it will open your layer styles you can click here to bring up your color picker and change the color just like this then you have the city skyline you can change the color by double clicking on this gradient map and then change the color from here You have got few other options like this mountain skyline and the palm grove. I'll keep the city one in this case. And then we have some stripes elements. So these are all the stripes that you see in the background. You can show or hide them or move them or change the color overlay again by double clicking it will bring up the layer styles and you can change them and if you feel some of the stripes are at odd position and you don't want them you can simply create a layer mask by clicking this layer mask icon and then take your brush and take a hard drawn brush from your general brushes make sure you are selecting color black and then you paint it and you can hide any unwanted stripes so now let's bring up our image elements and it has two parts one is this image background elements let's zoom in a bit so then you can have a better look so here we have the image shift background hatching you can change the color if you want for that you need to toggle this visibility of this solid color fill clipping mask you can double click and bring up the color picker and then you can change the color from here the next one is image shift background solid this one is white outline that separates the image from the background you can again double click and change the color if you want then comes image core elements and here you have the different level of hatchings and graphic elements that constitute the main image all these are solid color fields and you can change the colors or hide any one of them if you want you can easily double click on any one of them to bring up the color picker panel and you can change the color from there for a more customized look So next we have the text elements so we already covered them you can use one of those default generated texts one has a skewed style and another one has a straight edge but if you feel like you want to add some extra style you can take one of these text elements from the additional graphic elements psd file drag and drop it into your main image canvas and then edit from there then we have this texture group where we have a noisy texture, a grain kind of overlay that adds on to your entire image and you have this texture more. You can click it to add some extra grain onto your image. Then we have 20 color effects. These are simple adjustment layers. You can toggle the visibility and apply them with just one click. You can also mix and match to get some unique variations if you want. And then you have the overall adjustments where you can change the usual stuff like the levels, brightness, contrast, hue saturation and all the basic stuff. You can also use this overall gradient maps if you want to create a custom color look onto your overall image. So that's it for the 80s retro poster updated video guide i hope you like this and this one helps you in your design workflow and if you want to check out more cool photoshop actions and effects that i have created be sure to check out my portfolio from the link in the description section i'll see you soon in the next video and till then happy creating